let's talk about how we get this velocity and acceleration vectors and how they're derived, okay? Ay, the word derivation, right? But here, consider, let me get this drawing back for us uh, of this particle at some location. So here's my particle at some time t, and the position vector is defined as r u r hat. And if I want to get the velocity, I just take a time derivative dr dt. The thing to note here is that this unit vector is also a function of time because it changes direction with time. So if I move, if this particle is moving on the path, the direction of that unit vector is also changing. And so really, I have to apply the chain rule to this. So I have to take a time derivative of the first part of r here, which would give me dr dt, u r hat, plus the time derivative of the second part, which would be r and then d u r hat dt, like this. And in short notation, I would write r dot u r hat plus r, and this would be u r, this unit vector, a time derivative of that unit vector, this u r dot, okay? And so the question is, you can already see the form of the equation, but the equation that we had before, the final form of the velocity vector was this. It was r dot u r hat plus r theta dot u theta hat. And so the question is, how do we go from u r dot here to theta dot u theta hat. How did this happen? Or how does that happen? And so the question is, why does u r dot equal theta dot u theta hat? Like this, all right? So if we think about the definition of a derivative, the definition of a derivative here, this d u r hat d t, this is the limit as delta t goes to zero of this change in u r over the change in time. And so the question now is, what is this delta u r? What is this change in the unit vector or the r component unit vector? All right. And so then I got to ask myself, OK, at time t, my particles here, if it's moving up this path here at time t prime at some other time, the particle is here. And this particle has experienced a change, a small change in angle like this. And this right here is this change in angle theta. And my positive r direction or my unit vector in the r direction here at time t, I could say is, is here is going this way like this. I'll call this u r prime. And then 90 degrees to that is the unit vector for the transverse component, which is like this, u theta prime, like that, all right? So here are the original unit vectors at time t, and then I take the unit vector in the radial component at t prime, then I would have a drawing that looks like this, like that, all right? And my change in the unit vector, I'll put it in purple here, this change, is going from here to here. This would be this delta u r hat, like that, that, diff that little change here. And more importantly, if I, if I go back and I look at my original drawing, this angle right here, this angle right here is also delta theta. And if I look at the, this u r prime, the u r, and this delta u r by vector algebra, we could argue that this is 90 degrees there. This u r prime is equal to u r plus delta u r, like this. All right. And so that would be kind of the relationship between those three vectors, if you will. Now, we have a small angle assumption, like th this delta theta going from t to t prime is super small. It's very small. And when we have a small angle assumption, you probably remember something like this. There was like a ds r, and this was a d theta, and we had ds is equal to r d theta. So that radius times the 
the change in angle is equal to that, that segment, the length of that segment. So we know from our small angle assumption that the magnitude of delta s or ds is r d theta. And so very similarly, the magnitude of delta u r hat, the change in the this r unit vector or the unit vector in the radial direction is equal to the magnitude of the unit vector in the radial direction times the angle delta theta and the magnitude of a unit vector is just one and so what we have is that the magnitude of this delta u r hat is delta theta and so if i want to define now this Un this vector, this delta u r vector, it is the same as the magnitude in the u theta hat direction. Because of this right angle in our vector algebra, we know that this is actually pointing in that u theta hat direction. And so now if I reintroduce this to the definition of the derivative, I would get that u r hat the time derivative of ur, or dur hat dt, is equal to the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta theta over delta t u theta hat. And this is the same as d theta dt u theta hat, like that. And I could also write this, last but not least, as ur dot is equal to theta dot u theta hat. And so if I plug this back into our velocity equation up here for here, for this term right here, I would turn this velocity, this ur, this portion right here, is equal to theta dot u theta hat. And thus I get my velocity equation in polar components. Ayo, if you can understand this, the geometry associated with this, well, the acceleration result is the process is very similar and we just end up having more values or more more terms really as associated with this. So if I wanted now the acceleration. So now we want to know how do we get this mess right here, right? this giant equation really, to get the acceleration vector, I'm gonna take a time derivative of the velocity vector, which is essentially d dt of, and I have to again apply the chain rule here. And so this will give me, for this one, I'll start for the first set group right here, right here. So this is gonna give me r double dot u r hat plus r dot u r dot. And then for the second part, I got to take the time derivative of this. There's three terms there. So this is going to be r dot theta dot u theta hat plus r theta double dot u theta hat plus r theta dot u theta dot. And so the question is, how does this, how does this business, how does all this how does all this eventually become this right here? And I think you can already see, you know, if I start grouping unit vectors together, you can already see the R double dot with this U R hat direction already there. Um, the biggest mystery might be this minus R theta dot squared. Uh, you probably see the R theta double dot term right here and you see it in the u theta hat direction, all right? And so like, and here this r dot theta dot, you see one r dot theta dot, where is this other r dot theta dot that makes it two r, thought, r dot theta dot? Wow, it's like a tongue twister, all right? And so, so let's go ahead. So here, um, thankfully, we've already figured out that from our previous look at velocity, this u r dot is theta dot, u theta hat. So I can go ahead and substitute for here. I could say, well, this I already know is theta dot u theta hat. So that makes a hey, that that's there's that other r dot theta dot term that's going to provide this two r dot theta dot. All right. The sum of this term plus this term is going to give me the two r dot theta dot. All right, really what's left is what is this? What is u theta dot? 
And to figure that out, again, we look at this interval of time and the direction of the unit vectors. We know that this unit vector direction is changing. The direction of the unit vector is changing, even though its magnitude is not. And so if I look here, just as I did before, if I look at the change in the theta unit vector, the transverse unit vector here, going from t to t prime, and I build the similar drawing as I did before, all right, so I'll go ahead and I'll do that. So I have, I'll, I'll take this transverse unit vector, this u theta hat, and this u theta hat prime, I will pull those two vectors off the page and redraw them with their tails connected. And so if I go down over here, here's my u theta hat direction, and then 90 degrees to this is my radial unit vector, u r hat. And then at a time t prime, I have a u theta prime. And, and really, just like before, because it's really just a rotation, this is also delta theta. And as you can imagine, this right here, right here, boom, is the delta u theta hat component. Hopefully, you will agree that this angle here is also 90 degrees. And so that my by vector algebra, if I needed it, would be, would tell me that this u theta hat prime is equal to u theta hat plus delta u theta hat, like that. And by the definition of a derivative, you know, I know that u theta dot is equal to d dt u theta hat, which is the limit like this. And so what the heck is delta u theta hat? You know what I'm saying? And right here, we have this vector algebra or this drawing that tells us what it is. And if I look by small by the small angle assumption again, I have the magnitude of delta u theta hat is equal to the unit vector u theta hat, the magnitude of that unit vector times delta theta, and the magnitude of a unit vector is just one. This is just one. And so the, the magnitude of delta u theta hat is delta theta again, right here. And the vector, this vector delta u theta hat is delta theta, the magnitude, and it's pointing in the negative u r hat direction. And so we have to introduce a negative sign because the magnitude is delta theta pointing in the negative u r hat direction. And that's what gives us this negative result. Okay. And so now I substitute this back into my definition of the derivative. And this will tell me that u theta hat dot, it will be equal to negative the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta theta over delta t, u r hat, like this. Yes, 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 yes. And so this is the same as negative theta dot, u r hat. And so this, with this relationship right here, this u theta dot is equal to a negative theta dot, u r hat. I'm going to substitute this back into my acceleration equation. This is equal to, I'm going to put in negative theta dot u r hat. If I run the algebra now here, let's see, I'll start like putting some terms together. Just do some basic algebra and group terms together. I will get, let's see here, I'll try to put all the r hat, r double dot u r hat minus r theta dot squared u r hat plus 2 r dot theta dot u theta hat plus r theta double dot u theta hat. And you can already see the terms coming together. And this leads to, last but not least, if I just and so here, if you have watched this whole thing and have enjoyed this derivation, you're a superstar. You know what I'm saying?
you're amazing all right and so hopefully this is useful it gives you a sense of where this these equations come from you know you just didn't pull it out of somewhere <laughs> all right let me know if you have any questions below all right Start your